Welcome to the Basement Seals project. Uh, we've got some uh, order issues we had to iron out. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. So, uh, basically, we're just going to take a gathering of where we are at the minute. Uh, so, recently, we've been on the uh, Simplest C on Lance Fedora Workstation 35. And uh, basically, using the minimum amount of complexity necessary to get an iterative uh, build package deploy and update cycle going. Uh, we've not really done much in terms of actually programming anything in C++, but it's been a bit of a, we've had a good few, we've spent a good few project hours on it and finally got somewhere. Uh, then of course we've been keeping up, you'll know that uh, we added complexity by getting involved with GitHub, Git, and we use an application called GitG as well. Uh, so allowing us to get a little bit more professional, uh, a little bit more complicated, and to get an idea of how software projects work. Uh, uh, obviously, it's important uh, to get your iterative uh, make, build, package, deploy, install, and update cycle going, irrespective of what software you're programming or uh, what kind of applications you're making, generally speaking. Uh, allowing us uh, an evolutionary environment where uh, we can push new versions of the software out there, version 1, version 2, version 3, as we have a start from scratch sort of uh, mentality where going forward to future versions of the particular project project uh, product uh, allows us to evolve uh, going forward but also to take care of uh, everything really because uh, a lot of developers, uh, C++ programmers, uh, there's a bunch of issues on Linux uh, basically without going into too much and uh, yeah so another uh, problem we've got is uh, f when we sort of like add a, an IDE or a developer environment such as Visual Studio Code, uh, Eclipse, uh, Qt Creator, uh, uh, and builder, of course, and probably not. May, you've probably heard of Visual Studio Code. That seems to be the main main one. Uh, and uh, we had a look at adding that on, especially with GitHub, uh, and that also uh, allow you to check software in and check software out and work together as a team. And we also looked at how you had to create some security keys to work at that GitHub. So the simplest C plus plus project is all good and well for an individual developer. You might be pushing a particular single, you know, like as a, a developer evolution harness. So, this is the idea. But uh, in the real world, uh, collaborative projects and teamwork, it's, it's mainly about getting all that done. Uh, and we may have also mentioned as well uh, getting a, a, a build, a central build server. Uh, we also uh, had a bit of a look at uh, getting. Linux Fedora Workstation 35 cu coupled with a Linux server as well to really un open up some extra capabilities and uh, we had a look at uh, joining the workstations of the developers across the world together into a virtual private network domain uh, allowing collaborative uh, work to occur and teamwork to occur and uh, we referred back to GitG as well, uh, so you can have a have a, gra a graphical interface. Uh, however, the level of complexity we've upped the level of complexity, so it's no longer the simplest C plus plus project possible on Linux Fedora Workstation thirty five. So now we're probably going to go to uh, the most complex uh, iterative uh, build package, deploy, install, and upgrade cycle, which, which is basically what a lot of people are struggling with when it comes to C++. It's not necessarily the program language itself or what have you. It's kind of getting it built and getting it out there. So uh, we like to start at the end and end at the beginning. So in the beginning, we like to start at the end. And in the end uh, sort of destination really is to take your uh, person 
from like the student sort of phase of learning C++ to the uh, daily activities of actually developing software, uh, building software and pushing it out there to a user base. Uh, basically, so just, just to give you guys a bit of exposure to the sort of things it's going to take to do that. Obviously, we've got a, an issue with uh, dropping the IDE, which stands for the Integrated Development Environment, which is we'll probably just end up using Visual Studio Code, but there's lots of them out there. It's, there's particularly too many in Linux, and there's too many versions, and because there's lots of people, it, the way it is, is uh, it's just the way it is, I suppose. It's one of those things, uh, free is in open source, and free is in it doesn't cost anything, but also free. It's the free freeze of open source, really, and, and the freedom to do whatever the hell you want with it. So you could swipe pieces of source code here, there, and everywhere, and bring them all together in your own particular app, etc., etc., etc. But there's also a kind of like a bunch of other stuff that, uh, if you get right, uh, you could uh, certainly build uh, open source development teams and push your applications uh, out there. I and you, yeah, you can. We also mentioned how we want to get complex. We're going to do a, a bit of C plus plus for coming up on the channel. Uh, now that we've got the iterative, you know, initiate, make, build, package, and deploy, uh, install, and update cycle. So now we've got that taken care of. Although at a minute, the payload of, of the bundle, the RPM package, the bundle at a minute, basically the software that the end user themselves get to use, they kind of like don't get to see all of this behind the scenes development nonsense. But anyway, so we want that, have that uh, intention in mind that uh, we want to provide the uh, initiate, uh, make and build, package, deploy, install and update cycle. So we can go through version one. Uh, what said uh, then we develop some new features we can go to version two and push that out there develop some more features uh etc etc version three version four version five etc all along the journey that we can get to see in git g as well so we can see or uh, add developers to the project and we can see how it works uh professionally uh the dogecoin series we're gonna have to revisit that because right now that's that's kind of languishing we can uh, show that we've installed all the component parts, but the uh, Visual Studio can't see it finder. So when you build the software into a working app, it doesn't actually work via Visual Studio. We try with Eclipse. Again, we can show that all the component parts are installed uh, from the command, command line, but again, Eclipse can't find it. Same with the other integrated development environment, same with the, the other bundles, but if we go back to the command line and use the most basic make and RPM command lines or the command line scripts, like the, the little text prompt, all those component parts are there and we can make, basically. So we can make a piece of software, we can package a piece of software, we can distribute a piece of software, we can install a piece of software and we can update a piece of software as well along that line. When we get into version control and uh, Basically, any software project that has more than one person on it, basically, it's what kind of what you need Git, GitHub, and Git G for. And obviously, that uh, could do with uh, VPNing and getting domain name membership of your team. So, we could do with that where we can add people to the environment. And we also could do with getting the C compiler put on a server somewhere where within the domain. That way, when we come to build software, it's not built on each individual desktop. There's actually the build environment itself is under lock and key, a, a central area. That way, say, if you get 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 developers working on a complex piece of software, when they go to compile it, all the particular uh, deployments, uh, so it gets compiled from the central compiler, Basically, a bit like a radio station where each of the individual hosts log on via the uh, and uh, get to do the shows, but it goes out at the main radio station, joining a similar vein. 
So we're looking at adding, but of course we leave the simplest C++ online it's Fedora Workstation 35, then all of a sudden we've got massive amounts of complexity. So we need to build that out. Uh, for the individual, I'll get to work on it, and hopefully soon we'll figure out what's going wrong at the minute with the build doors going from source series because that's going to really help. I mean, literally, hundreds of millions of people on the planet can grab the Bitcoin or the Doge coin source code or the Algorand source code or what have you, and they can pile it at home and build it at home and uh, effectively allow them to have their own uh, Bitcoin wallets or Doge coin wallets that are independent of any particular website or provider. So th that's also the freedom is in that that's the free freeze of open source. Anyway, if you want to get in there and, and have a look at how how it all works behind the scenes and how everything gets bundled together, certainly we'll have that coming up on the channel. Uh, yeah, so we're going to get the Linux server side going so we can couple the workstation with the server and open up a whole uh, a whole new level of uh, capability uh, and complexity. So obviously we start with the simplest C++. We've took that as far as it can go, basically. We've tried getting the IDE working. We're stalling on that, but it's a work in progress. We'll get we'll get that sorted ASAP. Uh, and thirdly, so kind of like in the parallel development, we'll find that uh, to get to the next level of complexity, we need to bring on Git, GitHub and Git G, and bring on a team. But to allow that team to work side by side as securely, we need to bring on uh, domain name services or DNS. Where at the website, our website is www.thebasicmaterialsproject.com. Feel free to check it out. Uh, always a like and subscribe, always helps. Uh, but we'll get there and uh, we'll light up the website and we'll use the web servers DNS, uh, lightweight directory protocol, LDAP, DNS, LDAP, bind, DHCP, Dynamic Host. Uh, VPN and also cloud storage as well. So there's a little element of privacy there, there's a little element of security. The website has a secure certificate. Uh, we all know now about that HTTP secure with a little uh, padlock in your web browser, means there's a security, security certificate involved. And obviously, if you have a website yourself, you could do open up your domain as well to membership. Uh, it's a different kind of membership than we used to logging on over the web so visiting the website and logging on with username and password there it's a different level of security and there's a different level of complexity and it allows further complex projects to be deployed and of course uh, if you hang on tight enough we get past these uh, next basic material projects uh, forthcoming work then we uh, should be able to gain access to the website certificate to sign on our GitHub repositories and also to sign our, our final uh, RPM package so customers know it's us as well, especially if we're linking our application into uh, Bitcoin, crypto, NFT wallets, either on the client side or the service side, uh, and especially if our application has uh, uh, e-commerce, applications certainly there's definitely scope for a paid for bundle uh, that has uh, internal uh, an internal marketplace uh, that's definitely where we can definitely see some form of cryptocurrency like a bitcoin or a doge coin or an algorand there's definitely a situation where, especially if you're a teacher you're putting out lectures uh, you have books uh, and uh, Adobe uh, bundles as well. You could make the bundle itself relatively cheap. Uh, and of course, if you're tying the back end web server, your W. website has payment clearance anyway. There are a few modules out there. Uh, there's uh, a Bitcoin module that allows you to take Bitcoin Lite or Bitcoin Cash as well. So some commerce can take place. And of course, with the NFT sort of thing, uh, there's access uh, and also as well once if you could sell membership to your domain uh, you could do all the things you do on uh, YouTube such as live streaming you could have online chat 
obviously the interface into e-commerce that's probably going to be the most complex part uh, hopefully we can hit that sooner rather than later because that would mean that you kind of get a return on investment spending time on the base materials project channel watching the how to's and uh, how to build DOS from source or how to build the simplest C++ application uh, on Linux Fedora Workstation 35 etc so there's definitely a possibility uh, of course, uh, the website interface, we've got all sorts of radio players as well for online radio stations coming. Uh, there's a couple of good ones out there, TFR Live, of course, uh, Aftermath FM, uh, which I've just found out about, uh, as well as the ability to have uh, your workforce logged into the, dom to the domain in a more secure and connected manner than merely over the web interface and it will also allow kind of the sort of things you expect uh, from business or college where you can centralise all the applications. You can, of course, build many applications. We, of course, here have always concentrated on audio engineering and post production. So since we've got the website, which we started out in November, it was new to us, uh, but it's coming along nicely. We're getting there. And, of course, on the website front as well, we need to swap out the web package because it's... Uh, First, to be able to add more computational complexity, such as an Algorand wallet, on the web server itself, we need a, a more expensive hosting package and also the ability to join domains. And I believe it's a uh, secure socket layer or something like that SSH slash SSL uh, or command terminal prompt uh, that's needed to do that. Uh, So, obviously, what you can achieve this amount of computational complexity, kind of like at armada level or at fleet level, it allows you to do all sorts of stuff. Like, for example, the uh, Algorand code is, is free and open source, but to run it and make it available to the public, you kind of need a web server, but you can't drop it on the web server itself. It needs to be built as a module. Uh, and installed inside of the web server itself, so people would have to visit your website, they can instantaneously hit the Algorand, you know, they can buy, sell, or have NFTs and stuff like that. Uh, of course, you can make it uh, publicly available via your website. Uh, however, you have to have all sorts of specific modules in your web server. It's probably going to be Apache, an Apache web server. Uh, which would allow uh, basically hundreds of millions of people uh, on the internet to buy and sell trade. And of course, if you're a teacher, you have online lectures, for example, you could monetize that by putting uh, a Bitcoin wallet uh, with the NFT. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got this right, but the Bitcoin wallet can go on top of the NFT and the NFT can go on top of, for example, your company or your business intellectual property, whether that's YouTube podcasts, live streams, NFT tokens, artwork, uh, lectures, uh, or your audio book as well. We still are doing audio books as well in our out of the box uh, analog get up uh, as well. So that's still still available. We've got loads of audio books available for free download uh, on the Basic Materials Project SoundCloud. I think the links are out there somewhere. You may have to look around as well. Uh, yeah, and we've also got the Adobe Creative Cloud thing uh, moving along nicely. So, yeah, we've expanded the basic materials project this year. We did the app. Uh, couldn't get it. Uh, uh, there was something, but it was very expensive to certify it. Uh, basically, we have the app somewhere on the Linux Fedora build somewhere. That has all the basic basic materials projects, which we're basically solely concerned with creating a podcast or doing a few basic audio and post steps. Uh, we had all sorts of ice ice shout or ice cast uh, online radio bundle. We worked through that. Uh, yeah, looking back, but uh, for now the next basic materials projects uh, to set up the web server correctly. So we need to update our bundle. Uh, connect the Linux Fedora Workstation 35 to a domain. We still need to find out how to do this Linux strings or whatever they're called, Linux paths. Uh, so the Visual Studio ID can actually find everything, even though it's there. It, and when you hit build, it can't, it can't actually find it. 
like it has all the necessary hoo-ha and command line, what have you, and it's built all up. But for some strange reason, I can't uh, seem to get that to work. Really. That's not an area I know about previously. And then, of course, there's the Secure Socket Layer SSL slash SSH. Secure Socket Layer Secure Shell. That uh, we'll have to figure out. So that's how to uh, kick off your web server with your own custom built modules. We'll probably get that going shortly, uh, and we'll be using an Algorand source code for that. So we'll put basically an Algorand uh, blockchain oracle, I think it is, uh, on top of that, and uh, we'll see how using some web website we can put that on your website and get it going. Because let's face it, it seems right now. I mean. We've had legendary decades of talk radio on the internet. Uh, right now, the hottest area, of course, there's a bit of a big, a big bubble of thing going on with professional uh, currency traders and professional stock traders, and there's a bit of a challenge for all these whiz kid crypto uh, types. Uh, now, all that software is built uh, using uh, Ethereum smart contracts and uh, Java scripts, CSS. Cascading styles and HTML habitats, Merkle language in a bundle, and it's it Python seems to be big on that. Uh, obviously, it's completely different to how we do C++, but it's completely available. It's completely insecure, but they're working on it. We hear all, all these stories about online uh, whiz kids making millions in crypto and what have you. It's kind of different. The banking system uh, and all that is probably done. Because C++, once you've got it under lock and key, especially with the uh, compiler under lock and key in the build environment lockdown, very, very powerful, very fast, can do everything. Uh, however, the very concept of Bitcoin and blockchain and the storage coin and stuff like that is very different. Uh, and it does have some added security features. That, For example, in our C++ application, if it goes down the variable sources and the data sources and stuff like that you expect are no longer available. Uh, however, they, they were never public ac- public accessible anyway. There's a lot of security and a lot of privacy built in to the language and spec and that. Uh, in the blockchain space, uh, if the particular blockchain goes down, there's hundreds of other blockchains that are exactly the same, so you can go there. A bit like dereferencing memory, you have this memory reference thing in C++ that trips, trips up a lot of people. Uh, it's kind of like the antithesis to it. Uh, but nevertheless, the attention the presence is definitely seems to be with Bitcoin and crypto, uh, crypto, you know, crypto people and uh, NFTs and the blockchain and that. Uh, that seems to be getting all of the attention, really. Uh, more and more people are getting, uh, getting into it. Uh, I'm probably not going to cover it on this channel. We're probably just going to try and keep it C++, as uh, simple as possible. Uh, but we're moving forward to great complexity, of course, once again, just how we use GitHub, GitG, and Git, and how we've got to get these next few things going now uh, to turn it from, to take it from an individual person learning C++ to giving them the capability to deploy their own apps, etc., then of course we're moving into great complexity where we can onboard teams and work across the globe at the same time on the same software. All right, I'll leave it there for now. All right, once again, like and subscribe, check out the website, uh, thebasementofproject.com. All right, thank you for your attention. Okay, until next time.